All right, I've determined that my scene is safe. I have on the appropriate body substance isolation. My patient's nature of illness is going to be chest pain. If I identify one patient, my resources are adequate, and I would consider cervical spine stabilization. However, it's not appropriate for this scenario. So I'm going to move on to my primary assessment. I'm going to start by determining my general impression of my patient. Sir, my name is Ben Fontanellis. I'm here to help you. What seems to be bothering you? My chest hurts. So my general impression is that I have a male who's in his 40s. He's complaining of pain to his chest. Chest pain is his chief complaint. He appears alert, and based on the fact that he's speaking to me in full sentences, I do not believe there are any light threats to his airway. So I'm going to assess his breathing. I can see by visually inspecting his chest that he is breathing adequately. There do not appear to be any light threats. If this was a trauma scenario, I would be assessing the patient for any holes in his chest or any flail segments. Now I'm going to move on to assessing his circulation. Can I see your wrist, sir? The patient's pulse is present, it's rapid, and it's bounding. The patient's skin color is normal. His skin appears to be warm and dry. I do not see any evidence of external bleeding, and this patient is in fact a high priority for transport. Based on the results of my primary assessment, I'm going to administer oxygen to this patient, 15 liters per minute via non rebreather I'm also going to give a brief report to incoming EMS units, in which I'm going to tell them I have a male who appears to be in his 40s, who I believe is suffering from cardiac chest pain. Now I'm going to move on to my secondary assessment, and I'm going to start by determining the history of present illness. Sir, what were you doing when the pain started? I was moving boxes at work. Is there anything that makes the pain worse? Moving. And if you had to describe the pain in your own words, how would you describe it? Terrible pain. Can you show me where the pain is? My chest and shoulder and back. So it radiates to your shoulder and back? Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the least and 10 being the worst, how would you rate this pain? About 9. And how long have you had it now? About 30 minutes. Are there any other complaints at this time? Do you have any nausea, any dizziness, any vomiting, any difficulty breathing? No. And do you have any allergies to medications? No. Are you currently on any medications? I take blood pressure medication. So do you have a past medical history of high blood pressure? Yes, sir. Do you have any other past medical history? No, sir. When is the last time you took your blood pressure medication? What is the last thing you ate or drank today? I had coffee. And just to confirm, the events leading up to this pain was you lifting heavy boxes at work, correct? Yes, sir. Now I'm going to establish the patient's vital signs. I'm going to start by taking his pulse. Sir, can I see your wrist? pulse is 70 beats in regular. For the scenario, the patient's pulse is going to be 120 beats rapid and bounding. Now I'm going to take the patient's blood pressure. Can I see your arm? Go roll your wrist over. My patient's blood pressure is going to be 130 over 80. For this scenario, the patient's blood pressure is going to be 210 over 100. Now, because of the patient's complaint and the fact that the patient's complaint involves tearing pain, I would consider taking the patient's blood pressure on the other arm as well. I can see that his skin appears to be normal in color, does not appear to be pale, does not feel cool, in fact it feels warm, and it is not diaphoretic. Now I'm going to assess the patient's respirations.
patient's respirations are 12 and regular. For the scenario, they're going to be 16 and labored. Now I'm going to conduct a medical assessment based on the body system involved. And in this case, it's going to be the cardiovascular system. I'm going to start by checking the patient's jugular veins for any distension. Um, for this scenario, the patient does in fact have jugular vein distension. Now I'm going to palpate the patient's chest for any pain. Does it hurt when I touch? Doesn't change the pain at all. Now I'm going to listen to the patient's lung sounds. I'm going to do this posteriorly. Take a big breath in and out. Again. 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 patient's lung sounds are clear. So, last but not least, I'm going to look for any systemic edema consistent with congestive failure, and there does not appear to be any at this time. Based on my assessment of this patient, I believe that this patient is in fact suffering from possibly an aortic dissection. The treatment for this patient is going to be rapid transport to the hospital in a position of comfort with supplemental oxygen therapy. I'm going to reassess this patient every five minutes because I believe he's in fact unstable and I'm going to provide a verbal report to any, 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 any EMS units. <laughs> That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Oh. Right at the very end. That's all, folks.